Hey guys, it's Girl Got Game. We're here for one last sad ending because it is very, very sad. I just get all choked up. <laughs> Even if I may not particularly like Aaron myself all that much, I mean, they were happy at one point and in love, and it makes me sad to see that thrown away after only. S I guess they didn't even make it to their first year this time around. It's very sad to me. But it's time to pick the second option here. And that apparently will get us a different ending. So let's be aggressive, shall we? What the hell took you so long? Aaron holds up his arms defensively. Whoa, calm down, tiger. What, you on your period or something? Huh. An indignant huff escapes my lips. I'm not bleeding, but you're going to be if you don't answer me. Ugh, I wasn't planning on telling you this now, but you've just been so unbearable lately. I... Jeez, I imagine breaking it to you more gently than this. Out with it! I was with Abigail, okay? I'm not proud of it, but there you have it. But my question is, is that true in the other ending? <laughs> Or was he really sleepwalking? I'm, now I'm suspicious, Aaron. Aaron's face is red and he averts his eyes as he speaks to me. Despite his cool demeanor, I can tell that the secret has been eating him up inside. His shoulders seem to loosen momentarily, then tense up again after my prolonged silence. Well, say something. I knew it. Oh, of course. Yeah, I told you so, right? No, I'm not speaking from a place of jealousy. I just kind of knew in my heart that you two would end up together. You... what? You're not going to lash out at me? No, this... this surprisingly feels right. R really My statement seemingly wrenches something within Aaron, causing him to erupt into tears. Oh god, Amy. I was so afraid of losing you. I still care about you, you know? Just not... in that way. I knew what I did was wrong, but it, I just felt so good at the time. I was just so stressed. You weren't easy to live with when you were writing that book, you know that? I know. I'm sorry. It doesn't excuse what you did, though. I know. Believe me, I do. You were fairly obvious. You're a terrible actor, you know? The way you behaved around her and how you'd get irritated if I didn't treat her well? The nice guy excuse will only go so far. I'm sorry. It's okay. I want you to be happy. And if she makes you happy, then you should go to her. I... What? Are you serious? You're really okay with this? If you're asking if I approve of Abigail, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. However, I respect myself enough not to stay with someone who doesn't love me. The words taste better coming out of my mouth, as if saying them somehow validates my inadequacy. Aaron breathes an infuriatingly loud sigh of relief. Oh. He wraps his arms around me in what I can only guess is a gesture of goodwill. Thank you so much. You're great, really. I wish it could have worked out between... Save it. I push him away. His words, though offered in kindness, only serve to sting me. Aaron is silent and seems to crumple beside me. After a heavy silence, he speaks again. So, should I start looking at divorce attorneys, then? Whew. Fantastic fudge swirl! <laughs> the end tape. Oh, do we actually get to see her, like, Lawrence... I remember back in the day when you were, like, stalking me anonymously through email with romantic poems back in the good old days. <laughs> How about we do that for real now? <sighs> I find myself stumbling into Lawrence's nearby ice cream shop after my talk with Aaron, numbing my pain with a scoop of fantastic fudge swirl. Ironic choice, I know. So what happens now? Aaron said he'd find the divorce attorney, but there will likely be a lot of paperwork and legal hoops we have to jump through, right? And of course there's my book's publication. I wonder if I'll have to put the book tour on hold or if I can do all that divorce paperwork remotely. Surely they can email it to me, right? 
<sighs> I press my hand to my temple, feeling a stress headache coming on. Or maybe it's just brain freeze. I catch Lawrence out of the corner of my eye, watching me sheepishly from behind the counter. He's attempting to look busy by polishing a glass, but he's comically been polishing the same one for several minutes. He's clearly concerned about me, but too embarrassed to intrude. I smile, genuinely touched, and wave him over. Moments later, he's seated across from me. Lawrence! I knew something was wrong when you ordered Fantastic Fudge Swirl. That's not your flavor. Nectarine Cream Dream is your flavor. You only order fan Fantastic Fudge Swirl when you're stressed. Uh, wow. I guess you're right. It's like you've noticed me. Lawrence blushes and smiles slightly, then averts his eyes from mine. They land on my advanced copy sticking out of my tote bag. That's, uh, an advanced copy of my book, if you were wondering. Really? Can I... Go ahead. I retrieve the book and hand it to him. He turns it over and eyes it in silent wonder. Finally, someone who appreciates the creative side of me! Lawrence! I was going to show it to Aaron, but after what just happened, I don't feel like it anymore. Ah, uh, Aaron. Your husband. Soon to be ex-husband, I guess. Really? <laughs> Lauren's boy sounds a little too excited and he catches himself. I know you, boy. I mean, that's awful. I'm sorry. His tone of voice is still too jubilant to be convincing. He places his hand over his mouth to hide a burgeoning smile. Lawrence, I didn't realize you had such such feelings towards me being with Aaron. Several seconds pass before he speaks again. Can I, um, I want to read this. I can get you a copy if you want. Really? Yeah, we have hundreds of advanced copies printed. Taking one and giving it to a friend is no big deal. That would be great. Thank you. He offers me an innocent smile and then, apparently reaching his eye contact limit, looks away again. Wow, he genuinely cares about me. In the wake of today's events, this small gesture of interest helps me feel less alone. Ah! Amy! Down, girl! I reach across the table and take his hands in mine, causing him to jump somewhat. He eases slightly, though doesn't relax together. You're a good friend, Lawrence. Thank you. His eyes catch mine, but he soon looks away again. Uh, uh. A few small chuckles escape his lips before he erupts into full-blown giddy laughter. Lawrence, are you okay? <laughs> I tilt my head in confused amusement. He's a good friend, if not a bit weird and stalkerish. Ending fantastic fudge swirl. Forget injuries, never forget kindnesses. Confucius. So confusing. But apparently that, uh, that dating never, <laughs> that dating never happened. It didn't work out. Sorry, Lawrence. <laughs> Your stalker's ways were just too much. You and Abigail should get together, I guess. <sighs> oh my goodness. All right. Well, we did it, everybody. We're done <laughs> with the first round of Never Forget Me. Man, was that, oh. That was hard to get through, but wow. There were some moments in there, but it was ugh, so infuriating having Abigail be the antagonist again and being problematic. Anyway, we did make it through, and now we're going to go back to Cinderella Phenomenon now. I believe we have a certain beautiful man-lady <laughs> named Karma, Karma Karma Chameleon, that we have to go romance. So, I hope to see you over there for that, guys. I'm really excited to get back to that. So until then, I'll see you later, guys.